Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta and our next installment of the Octurian Anthology. Today, we are going to be looking at this section that is channeled by Anandra, the Akashic Librarian of the Octurian Civilization. Now, if this is your first time on Esoteric Atlanta, welcome. I'm so glad you are here. If you would like to catch up with previous episodes of this work by Tom Kenyon, there is a link for the playlist down in the description box below it's under the playlist understanding the magdalene we also have the sophia code in there the magdalene manuscript in there the hathor the hathor material in there as well as the return of the divine sophia and megas megan waterson's commentary on magdalene's um gospel now um we're gonna be talking this is this is a, a shorter chapter in this book and i know that we're going to be talking about the akashic library and i did get a question last week from somebody regarding the akashic library and knowing so many people are claiming to be able to read the akashics all that kind of stuff and somebody asked me my opinion on that and i'm just going to tell you guys absolutely the akashic library in my opinion is very real with that being said, though, sometimes I feel like things like the Akashic Library can become very dangerous to your own development in this life. It's the same thing as like past lives. Like, yes, they're very real and they're interesting. And I, I understand the need to want to learn more about who you were in a past existence. But if they're hindering your development in this life, then I wouldn't even bother with it. Um, with the Akashic Library, I don't know who can really read your Akashics and who can't. That's going to be up to your gut instinct and your own um, feelings about a certain person. At this point, I'm not super interested in having anybody read my Akashic Records because I don't feel like I need them. I'm on the journey right now to be Bryce. And that's that's my focus is, is, is being this experience and not trying to distract myself with past information or getting, getting too off-worldly or too otherworldly because um, sometimes that can be used as a form of escapism. So I'd really ask yourself that question, like, why do I feel like it's necessary to look at my Akashic records right now? Ask yourself that question for, first and foremost. Are you doing this as a form of escapism? Secondly, you know, you can do things like soul readings, like my friend Tamara, who's on the channel all the time, she offers soul readings. Those are really good. I've had one done with her and she focuses on this life. And so you're able to really understand your habits and your propensity towards your dharma in this life. And so that's something I would focus on more. That's just my opinion. But at the end of the day, you've got to do what's best for you and what your gut feels like you should be doing. All right. With that being said, let's go ahead and look at Anandra. This is page 97 for those who are following along with the book. I am known as Anandra. I am what you would call an Akashic librarian for the Octarian civilization. I am the holder of Octarian history. I have been asked to share my perspective on the Octarian dilemma. I have been in this capacity as a holder of the Octarian Akashic records for 10 million years. Thus, I am aware at the earliest period of my position that Sunat Kumar had intercated with your planet. I should like to explain first of how all the historic memories of the Octarian memories are held. As my predecessors have said before me in this discussion, our primary language is tele telepathic holography. This is a field of information that holds any event in relationship to the past, present, and future possibilities simultaneously. I would like to proceed without the restrictions of your syntax and punctuation. Telepathic holograms for Octurians are primarily spherical in shape, but they can, from time to time, take other geometric configurations. The Akashic Library for the Octurian Civilization contains all telepathic holograms that were ever created by any and all Octurians. This is a massive amount of information. Similar to the quandary in your language, the answer to a question is defined by the question itself. You have to ask the correct question. Ooh, that's like the I Ching. The I Ching is very specific. You have to be very specific with your question with the I Ching. If it's not specific, you are not going to get a specific answer back. In the Acturian Akashic Library, all information is sorted in the Octurian Akashic Library, all information is sorted related to Octurian interactions between themselves and other beings. 
But all that information is cross-referenced to the past, to the present, and to the future likelihoods. And all of this exists simultaneously in the holographic information retrieval system. You would call it a supercomputer. But the processor, if you will, is light itself. We use light as the foundation principle for most of our technologies. Thus, when I was asked to share my perspective on the Octarian Dilemma, I had to cross-reference huge volumes of information related to the past, the present, and future possibilities. The present dilemma in relationship to human beings is the same dilemma we face during our first encounters. This is rooted in the Octarian mission to protect life, intelligence, and freedom. I personally liked what Ektara, the science officer, added to this phrase, to protect life when it deserves protecting. And from my position, I do not consider all life worthy of being perpetuated. But this is a philosophical consideration and not one I am officially being asked to present. Nevertheless, the Octarian Dilemma exists because of our intent. How we do, as an intergalactic civilization and explore race, protect life, intelligence, and freedom in lower dimensions of reality. How do we, as an intergalactic civilization and an explorer race, protect life, intelligence, and freedom in lower dimensions of reality. I specifically mean in this instance, human beings living in three-dimensional reality. The first problem arises due to a mismatch between dimensions. The bulk of our civilization resides in the fifth dimension, and our technologies are fifth-dimensional in nature. Some of our more advanced ones have ascended to higher dimensions, but as a collective whole, we perceive re reality through the lens of the fifth dimensional reality. As a biological organism, you experience reality through the lens of your nervous system, which is fully and completely adapted to the unique challenges in the third dimensional reality or third density as the Cassiopeians and the Law of One call it. That's correct. We are in third density. You are bound by gravity, at least your bodies are. We are not bound by gravity. We are not bound by the gravity well of Earth. You communicate through a primitive series of sounds that you call language. We use sounds in a different way. We use them to mark the beginning and the ending of a telepathic holographic transmission. You have encoded in your DNA the directive to be a slave to some higher power thanks to the Anunnaki. This is a deep impediment that is hardwired, as it were, into your very genetic structure. You have a tendency, as a species, to look up to beings from other dimensions and consider them as gods. So, the dilemma facing Octurians who interact with third dimensional entities such as you are becomes very complex. As an intergalactic explorer civilization, we were driven by our mission to protect life, intelligence, and freedom. And as our technologies became more advanced, we were able to push further and further into the universe, and we carried with us this primary mission. Like all civilizations, at least those that have survived long enough to self-reflect, we Octurians are beginning to recognize an inherent flaw in our directive. Sunat Kumara was the first to address this in our discussion. It is an issue of the heart or the feeling nature. We Octurians are not omniscient, nor are we omnipotent, even though our ornaments are rather impressive. We are subject to the foibles of our own nature, just as are you humans. And this holds true for all entities, regardless of what dimension they reside in. I think that I have been asked to share this information with you as an attempt to demystify and demythologize the idea of Octurians as your saviors. No one's coming to save us. We have to save ourselves. While we are and have been for a very long time guardians of this sector of space you call your solar system in the Milky Way galaxy, our capacity is limited. It is limited by the differences between our dimensions and our inability to fully comprehend what it means to live in a lower vibratory level. Our existence as a third dimensional civilization is far behind us. It is a distant memory. We have moved upward into fifth dimensional reality, and so we are handicapped by the differences between us. 
as I look at your human reality at the beginning of the 21st century, I cross-reference your past and your future possibilities. In regards to your genetic potential, I have no doubt that you are restricted by your Anunnaki manipulation. It is in your DNA. This interesting situation for me, as I view your past and your future possibilities, centers around the development of your genetic sciences. Your science and technology have developed to the point that you can manipulate genetic information. This is both a positive and a negative. If I were to describe the current mental atmosphere of your developed world, I would describe the palpable, t palpable tension between those who wish to remain faithful to the Anunnaki manipulation, and by that, I refer to those who need to serve the idea of the gods. The fundamentalist religions sense what is about to occur, and they want nothing to do with it. I'm telling you guys, the Christ Christianity is not going to ascend. She's right. This person says it's, it's yeah, it's, no. <laughs> not, and I don't want to confuse Christianity with the true teachings of Yahshua. The true teachings of Yahshua are not what they're teaching in the Christian churches. The Christian churches are teaching you to be enslaved. Yahshua taught you to be liberated. And what is about to, to occur? And what is about to occur is the discovery of the Anunnaki manipulation and the actual codons of your DNA. This is about 25 years into your future. As the human DNA double helix is fully mapped and understood in all of its complexities, a small anomaly will be discovered. This is the Anunnaki, this is the Anunnaki manipulation. What a powerful moment this will be in your future when the source of your imprisonment is discovered through science. There will be much polarization between those who wish to remain faithful to God's will, the Anunnaki agenda, and those who wish to free themselves to become greater gods and goddesses. And yet in the span of time, a distant possibility is also present, which is nothing, nothing less than the annihilation of life, at least most of it. This is a critical time for your species as I view it, and the Acturian dilemma is how to assist you to bridge these tumultuous times. I have spoken about the variables between we Octurians and human beings, and this handicap of perception affects both those who are looking up to the higher dimensions, as well as those looking down, so to speak, from higher dimensions. We have not solved this dilemma. It is an ongoing experiment, and it is completed by the arising of the Octurian heart in a collective of my civilization. There is a wave of recognition among Octurians that the mission, whatever it is, must be tempered by our hearts. In the past, we have abandoned what we felt in our hearts in order to be true to the mission, as we understood it. And I must say that this understanding of the mission, like all things, is relative to the perceiver. Just as with you humans, we Acturians have a consensus reality, a collective viewpoint on the true nature of reality and the purpose of our existence. And like you, when a new consens consensus reality emerges, it is at first disruptive. It forces self-reflection and the consideration of history and the direction for the future. We, like you, create possible timelines through the constellation of quantum realities perpetuated by the individual in our collective society. And when enough individuals change their minds, the course of history is altered. And the same holds true for you. All right, guys, next week we'll pick back up with Magdalene.